So my injury came about playing Quinns, uh, disc at my shoulder in a breakdown, came back after five months, came to my first game back against Exeter, made some tackles, I was like, oh, this is feeling great actually, adrenaline's pumping, this is fantastic, yeah. never even thought about any other injury, got tackled, and uh, yeah, my knee basically was facing the touchline, but the Exeter doctor was an A&E specialist, so he luckily could relocate it on the pitch, which, I mean, unfortunately I had to retire in the end, but it probably saved a lot of my leg. Mine happened opening weekend, you know the excitement there's always with opening weekend. Took like a slight bump on a body check, not even a big shot, didn't feel right. Uh, went in to do my HIA, passed my HIA, um, but never felt comfortable continuing the game. There was only a few minutes left, so I thought it's easier to make sure that I'm right for the next week. Um, stayed with friends that evening. Drove back the next day, but I almost felt hungover all the time. Especially those first two weeks, there were small things that triggered me, whether that was the lights um, during video sessions or driving in the evenings. Yeah, so that's how it got me to end up missing the full season. It's a completely different mindset being injured and it is so important to have that person with your physio and have that, you know, have the, the yeah. people around you and sort of teammates as well. I, I relied a lot on in terms of um, speaking to and, you know, sometimes you just want to vent. You just want to stand there and just get it off your chest. But I'm a big fan of venting and like I remember I, I would just had a few candidates I knew who I could go with for certain frustrations I had. Um, but it's remarkable if you think back about it. So many of the conversations me and those guys are having now is based on stuff like you've now said. I've shared with them in those tough times. Unfortunately, it's a blessing being competitive and having this testosterone and wanting to go out and get yourself sorted. But equally, it is a crux as well because <laughs> you should just like, let your body and let other people take control. But you're not, you know, as a sportsman, you're not used to letting other people take control of your life. You're used to being the one in control. And Especially because it's every weekend yeah. we get an opportunity to play. So even if we lose on Saturday, next Saturday we get another opportunity. Yeah. That uncertainty was worse for me than actually thinking about the injury or what it could be. It's the uncertainty for all those weeks in, weeks out. And you know what it's like. You walk into a coffee shop, yeah. GJ, nice to see you. When are you back playing? Going through this injury, I realized a lot of time on my hands, I'm not allowed to drive, not allowed to watch any TV or use my phone. My mother, is from day one, always said, GJ, you need a degree. Let's say it finishes today, I need a desk to study on because I'm gonna get this degree. So uh, first thing I did was build a desk. Uh, still don't study. And that's where my idea got born about the shoe company which I've started, which I've then invested so much time started listening to podcasts and audiobooks and those type of things, trying to prepare myself for if this is actually going to happen, let's be confident to go into a different direction. I'm lucky enough to still continue playing, so that's almost postponed those ideas, but it's always, I try to look for things, hobbies, essentially to try and cope with it, the time away from the game, which is all I've known for so long. Some people probably don't have a huge friendship group or some people don't necessarily have an interest in going to an apprenticeship. So it's about understanding what is the way that you're going to best overcome it, isn't it? And it's about understanding what have you got in your life that you could go into or to, to take your mind away from it. And that could be, yeah, doing this, it could be doing that. And I think that's the main thing. I think bouncing off other lads who said like, you know, speak to your physio or your other rugby players and say like, look, what helped, what did you do? To and they might come up with a suggestion that you never thought of. And then you might be like, oh, actually, I might try that, it could be great. It could be like archery or something, I don't know. <laughs> At the club, it's just the life we live. You, the mates you have and the mates, especially being a foreigner or being from South Africa, the only people you know are through rugby and there's a handful of people outside you can reach out because it's also difficult to reach out to people who don't know rugby to share with them the pressure and the responsibility there is with playing rugby. Be the second setback with my knee, we were at a social a couple of months after, and I remember just being on crutches, just sat in the corner, and like, you're just not feeling a part of it, you don't feel you've earned it, you just feel like you're so far away from the lads. I just broke down, and like, usually I'm quite a happy guy, I'm a jokey guy, not, not, you know, I don't really come across as morose to an extent, but, you know, lads have never seen me like that, and, you know, everyone's like, oh my word, like, 
and you know people then understand how hard things are you know with that I was really struggling and I needed support and I couldn't go and my resilience it run dry and I needed someone to lift me up because I tried to put a brave face on and eventually I just had nothing left to give and that's when you know I sort of opened up to the lads and that's when I felt so much better because they could pick me up and lift me through and get me through these really tough periods and stuff. Being South African, where you got taught, men don't cry, men don't speak about their emotions. If I look back at it, it's funny now when I think about it that that was even my way of thought. Not because of that's the way I was, my childhood was, well, it's just the way we grew up and it's always been the way things are done. Um, but it's, it's funny because where else would you see grown men cry? At the end of the day, it's a sport. It's yeah. a game we play. Yeah. It's given us so much in terms of life lessons. It's made us better persons, better people. Yeah. So like, I always, especially with youngsters, it almost feels like they need a bit more leading or an arm around the shoulder to say that it doesn't define you. This isn't everything. It's not the be all or the end all. Sometimes I found, well, I found, I was quite self-centered when I was playing a lot of the rugby. I was concentrating on myself, I was concentrating on the games, and in my head I was like, I need to just concentrate, I can't have these distractions almost. And I became, yeah, consumed. I'll tell you what was good though, when I got back to almost full fitness was, it never felt so good in the gym because you never took contact. No, yeah. Oh. You could just, you're Jeez. fit because you're running, and you can lift weights because you never saw. Yeah, your shoulders it was it's, like, it's, it's probably the highlight of the yeah. whole injury was well, the fact so that you like, could be. what shoulders feel like. Yeah. <laughs> it's understanding that there's certain elements in your life you can control, there's certain elements you can't. Yeah, it's that way of overcoming, and it's you know, it's it's when you transform from being this injured person, and then you come back and you're nervous and you fear to being like, no, I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna survive, I'm gonna prove people, and you shift your mindset to confidence and like, look, there's certain elements in your life you can control, there's certain elements you can't. When well, it was tough initially, but that happened and it was no one's fault, it was, I, I couldn't have done any more, it was a freak thing, and now from it, what's a silver lining that I can take from it? And that's, you know, the mindset I've got towards these things. You know, you, you realise you're stronger than you actually are, you know, and I think that's the, that's the silver lining of it, knowing that, you're more resilient than you were before. You're mentally strong. You're now stronger than you are, and you, you're more, you know, and you've got that mental resilience that is tough to, to build without that adversity. And that's, I think, is is such a powerful thing that people can understand. And that mental health is a very tough thing, and everyone has different ways of dealing with it. But ultimately, knowing that you are stronger than you realise, and that actually the adversity you're facing won't last forever, and that with that adversity, you're only going to be a stronger and better person. Yeah.